What up guys, this is Matt from Liquid Fungi and today we are here with Alex who is a biomedical engineer over at Kaiser. Well, he's a student right now over at Kaiser and he's studying and he also interns here over at Liquid Fungi and he is helping us with our PCR testing program for us to be able to genetically confirm our species here. So uh, the first one we ever did was turkey tail and he just uh, he just got the results back so I'm going to let, uh, let Alex take it from here. Alright, well hey internet and team. Um, so what we're gonna look at real quick is when we send out, we, you know, we've already been over, and I think we've also had a video of kind of the overall process. So when we get information back from sequencing, we get a, a zip file uh, for the particular company that I've been using uh, to do sequencing, which is Eurofin Genom uh, Genomics. Uh, they got a, their actual sequencing service out of Tennessee. Um, but we get back a number of files. The big ones that are important for us at the moment are a sequence file, and then this is a chromatogram, which I know we've discussed in house, but we'll go over it again real quick. Um, just to start, we'll go over the sequence file. Let me close this. Makes it easier to focus on. Um, what, you're, what we're looking at here is a series of read sequences, right? So when we send out a sample, we won't go into what Sanger sequencing is, but essentially it builds um, it builds our sequence based on another version of PCR that builds after we send it out. To, let's not get into it for now, but basically what we're looking at is the longest sequence of clean A, T, C's, and G's that we can find. Um, the ends in here represent nucleotides, so the system reads um, that there is genetic information in nucleotide form, but it just can't decipher what it is. So I look, this was a 1,000 base pair read approximately 1,045 to be exact. We were looking for a 500 to 800 base pair target. Um, it's not uncommon for these things to be above or below that number. Um, there's a lot, of, there can be a lot that goes on, especially when we're trying to work with the fungal tissue that we're working with. Um, but basically I, I tried to find the longest segment, which I believe is 289 characters. So let's see if I can find that number here. So with this right, yep, 289. So what we do is we look for that number, copy. We go, and again, it's been a while since I've talked about this. It's taken a while for me to figure this out. Um, but we go into the NIH um, NCBI blast, blast system, which is basically where you can go and um, search known published genomic databases. We enter that, uh, that clean sequence in, and we make sure we're you know, their experimental database we can run. We're running on our standard database and we're making sure that we're searching the nucleotide sequences. Um, we blast it. And basically what this system is doing now is checking that sequence against other known sequences, right? And you get this information here, you get this table. Um, turkey tail, scientific name is Tremades versicolor. I don't know. That's the right. Exact best way to say that. Um, but if you look here, so just left to right, what this is showing that the initial sequence data that we're matching with all matches with Tremides Versicolor. Um, it gives us 100 returns, all Tremides Versicolor, which is a good sign to start, but it's, it shouldn't be what we consider to be a verification of strain. Once we go over here and look at our score totals, that will tell us a lot more. Um, Probably not for this conversation, but these things like max score, total score, query cover, all mean. The two big things we're going to look at is this E value score and this percent identical. So it's this E value, think of it like what are the chances that the sequence that we entered can randomly be a sequence on any given genome? And can collide. It's a collision collide. factor. And this is four to the um, exponent constant to the nine, negative 94th power. So this is like. A really, a really zero. high collision. A really, it's, a, a, it's a very small number if you do the math here. And a very really like, small possibility of collision. A, a, almost almost mathematically impossible. Yeah. It's not mathematically impossible, but close. It's not one in a thousand, though. Right. We know that much. <laughs> right. And all of these uh, mimic that number. Our last one here on this particular search, um, it's slightly lower. So there was one published one for, for this species that maybe there's a nucleotide off or there's a gap somewhere. Um, but overall, the coverage as well, um, this percent identical, they're all 99.4 plus. Um, I have, you know, just through advisement been told that like if you're getting somewhere, if, if you've got a good E value and you've got a percent identical in the low to mid 90s at least, you can assume you have a match. Um, 
you know, this is not necessarily the same as being... You also have to take into account how fresh your genetic sample was and other yeah. things because you could have other factors that are affecting that value. Yeah. But basically what we can look at is if we knew that we took a sample from turkey tail and we come in here, we enter the genomic information, this is basically telling us that based on published data, there's very little chance it was anything but turkey tail. Right, that right. We, that we see. So, so pull up an R document mm -hmm. now, and this is the first document... Mm -hmm that Alex has created to certify a genetic strain. And this is the specimen determination document, which pretty much outlines the evidence and the matching sequence and all the information that, you know, he gathered through this experiment on turkey tail. Mm -hmm. And so this is, um, and, and basically how this is laid out for, for us in house is just some basic information on it. Um, a little narrative, uh, again, we can change how we want to put the language, but like specimen verified with a high degree of confidence. It means based on the information that we had here and all the numbers, we, we believe our turkey tail is actually turkey tail, um, including some information that um, the lineage has never produced unanticipated fruiting bodies that we're aware of from customers. Um, and based on our blast results, we have no reason to think that it's not turkey tail. Um, we can take a screenshot of the actual blast results along with our genomic information if anyone were to want to test it themselves or run these themselves and yeah. then an image of our chromatogram and if you notice here our chromatogram image isn't like super strong um mm -hmm. i know the last time we talked like i got a lot of information like this um we're still refining the process so we're hoping to get stronger chromatogram but again even if these peaks aren't that great, this kind of information along with these numbers in blast give us a really good indication that our turkey tail is in fact turkey tail. So this is the, basically how we kind of build our specimen identification documentation. And keep in mind, this is not something that we only can use or you know have to use with the strains that we sell. I think originally a lot of this was about contaminants. So when it comes to fungal contaminants too, once we get this process down, we should be able to... Yeah, I mean, it's always been about making sure we're giving people what they pay for, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what this is really about. So, we even though our big test is we've always fruited it. We've always fruited it in the room, and we've been, you know, really adamant about fruit testing everything. But even between the last time we fruit tested it and between now, there could be something that got in there, some sure. contaminant, some bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing frequent genetic tests and being able to do these tests in-house is really, really important to us. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Alex, for pioneering this project, by the way. Thank you guys and for all the support. Like, yeah, man. And thanks, thank you, Kaiser University, man. You guys have been yeah. badass. They've been letting us use their full-fledged laboratory over there, yeah. all their genetic testing equipment, their PCR testing equipment. So they have, you know, thermocyclers. They've let us use everything over there. So. Dr. Canfield, Dr. Coach, Dr. Tawari, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, being very supportive of this project. And uh, that's it. We just want to show you guys what we're doing at liquidfungi.com to ensure that you guys are getting what you pay for. So check us out, liquidfungi.com, people. Peace.